What's up guys, Ryan here. If you have not yet seen Peter McKinnon's latest short film, The Bucket Shot, stop what you're doing right now, pause the video, open up a new tab, go to Peter McKinnon's channel, click his latest video, The Bucket Shot, and go watch this video right now. Then come back and obviously finish watching this video. I'll wait. I've got five minutes. Actually, a little bit more than that because this video is like 20 minutes long. You got 20 minutes, go, watch it. Okay, so hopefully you guys went and watched Peter McKinnon's video. If you didn't, I don't know what to tell you. The rest of his video is totally awesome and I suggest you go watch it when you get a chance. The effect that he uses is actually really easy to do and you can do it in After Effects. It takes maybe like five to 10 minutes, five if you're really quick. What I like so much about this effect is it's so simple yet just so fitting and it's just a cool effect that he did and it really tied in nicely to the rest of his video. Okay. Let's jump into After Effects and let's get started. Okay, so first we're going to create the background layers. We're gonna go to Layer, New, and then hit Solid. And we're gonna call this BG for Background and we'll make it black. Go ahead and lock that layer so you don't make any accidental changes to it. And now we're gonna create a new text layer. So we're gonna make sure our text color is white. And then I like to use the Daisy Wheel font. Um, so we're gonna type right here in the middle, a film by Okay, and then let's go ahead and center that up. Looks good. Okay, now we're gonna create a shape. So we're gonna hit the uh, rectangle tool and we're gonna come underneath here and just create a, a quick and easy rectangle shape. Okay, so now we're gonna do something I like to just kind of tidy up the look. Um, you can see right now that the corners are, are squared off. Um, so what we're gonna do is go to the shape layer, go to contents, rectangle, rectangle path, and then you're gonna see an option here that says roundness. We're gonna change this to 2.5. And if I zoom in here, you can see that changing this setting changes the edges so that the edges are round rather than squared off. So we go back to zero, you'll see that it's a square. So let's put it back to 2.5, zoom out. Okay, so now that we have this layer in our rectangle shape, we're gonna create one more text layer, make sure it's black. And for this, I'm gonna do wake up to Ryan. And we're gonna center that on the rectangle itself. Okay, now let's make sure rectangle, okay. So it looks like it is centered. Cool, I'm gonna drop this down just a tad. Okay, so uh, now we're at a good position. Um, I'm gonna move these layers around just so they are kind of uh, layered correctly. Let's hit save. Okay, so now that we have uh, all of our layers created, we're gonna start building the animation. So I'm gonna select the wake up to Ryan and shape layer real quick and just make sure that I anchor everything to the center of the screen. It'll just make uh, the animation a little bit easier. All right, and let me just turn off a film by real quick so we can see that. Okay, okay, so we got both of these in the center here. Let's zoom back out, and then we're gonna select the two layers, right click and hit pre-compose. And we're gonna just call this, and we're just gonna call this wake up to Ryan. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is turn that layer off real quick, select a film by, put this in the very center here, Okay, and then um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pre-compose that as well and call this a film by. Okay, so we're gonna slide this back up, turn this bottom layer on and scroll this down. Okay, so now that everything is kind of in the center here, we're gonna start adding our effects. So the effect you get to make these things kind of jiggle a little bit, um, for the bottom we're gonna make it wiggle rotate. So we're gonna type in wiggle and we're gonna look for the rotation option. Drop it down onto our layer and you can see it kind of gives this extreme default option right now. So what we're gonna do is change the wiggle amount to 0.5 rather than 30. And then the speed we can mess around with. Let's start with, let's start with 10. And if we play back, you can see it start to wiggle. Now you can do the same thing for a film by if you want, but I like to do something a little different. So instead of doing the rotation, the wiggle rotation, we're gonna do wiggle position and we're gonna drop that onto our top layer. And we're gonna do the same thing, drop this down to 0.5 and change this to 10 and see how it looks. Okay, cool, so that looks good. Okay, so now to get the zoom in and out effect, we're actually gonna create a null object. So we're gonna to go to layer, new, scroll down to null object. We're gonna place this above the uh, two layers that we've created and then parent it to this null object. All right, now we're gonna click on the null object, go to transform. Okay, make sure you zoom out all the way in your timeline. We're gonna hit the keyframe for scale. Every little mark here you see, we're gonna create a keyframe and we're gonna start off with every other one and just make a keyframe on every single one, making sure that it stays at 100. All right, 
And then in between, we're going to do, uh, let's do 105. We'll copy that, paste it on each. Okay, so you can see we're now getting that effect, but it looks a little rigid. Um, so what we're going to do is select all of these points once we get the animation to stop. Going to select all of them, right click, hit keyframe assistant, and then click easy ease. And what that'll do is give us more of a smooth in and out kind of effect here. Cool. Okay, now we're going to drop in our dust and scratches. So we're going to drop this down below. Looking good. It's a little too much though. So what we're going to do is drop the opacity by 50%. Okay, cool, that looks good. Okay, so now we need the um, kind of fast blur effect. So what we're gonna do is create a new adjustment layer. I put it above the two layers we created earlier. Type in fast box blur, there it is. Drop it onto our adjustment layer. We're gonna change the blur dimensions from horizontal and vertical to just vertical. And then we're gonna hit repeat edge pixels, keep iterations three, and then we're gonna open up our effect here, go to effects, fast box blur. And then we're going to do, let's see, let's do it at 10 frames in. Now we're going to create some keyframes here with the blur radius. So we're going to hit the keyframe marker, go over two, hit it again. And then in between the two markers we created, let's try 15. Cool. So you can see when we play it back, it's just doing a really quick effect here. We want to probably make it a little bit more noticeable. So let's do that. There we go. Okay. So then what we can do is we can copy this and paste it elsewhere in our timeline. And you can do it completely random if you want. And let's see how that looks. Cool. Looks good. Okay. So now we want to select our adjustment layer, the top and bottom layer. Hit Control D, which is going to duplicate all these layers, put them all together, and then we're going to hit Precompose. And we'll label this as Big Glitch. Okay, so now that we have that layer, uh, what we're going to do is actually punch in to 150%, and then we're going to look for a period where the um, box blur takes effect. So right here. So now we're going to cut this layer hitting Shift Command D. And then after it ends, hit shift command D again. And then what we're gonna do is actually put this layer beneath everything else. So what we also wanna do is reduce the opacity to about 25%. Okay, so what we're having here is you can see the layer pops up um, and then starts doing the same effect, but we don't want them both to happen at the same time. So we're gonna move this. And we could probably make it a little bit bigger. Let's do 200% and maybe off to the side. And then what we can do is actually copy and paste this throughout the project in various positions. All right, so now we wanna move each of these just so they're not in the same spot every time. So we're gonna leave this one there. These two will slide over just a bit and we'll move the second one just down a tad. And we can leave that one there select these and I'm selecting these in groups because you don't want to have when they happen uh, consecutively like this you don't want them to be like boom 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 I mean you can but it just kind of is a little distracting so I like to move them in, in groups and then kind of just adjust the uh, vertical level on the y-axis so this one's gonna start up here then we're gonna do this one kind of in the middle here and then this one can go down here Let's see how that looks Cool, and we don't really need to change that uh, one at the end there, we can kind of just leave it. Okay, so the effect is just about done. Now you obviously can put in a little bit of um, finishing touches or some polish. What I like to do, and this isn't required, um, it's also a plugin that you may not have, but I like to just create a new adjustment layer. And just so we don't get confused, we're gonna call this one Fast Blur, and we'll call this one Twitch. And what we're gonna use is a plugin called Twitch from Video Copilot. So Twitch. Um, I think this plugin is actually relatively inexpensive. I think it's $45 from videocopilot.net. 
So definitely go check it out. It's really cool. You can do a lot with it. It's not limited to just what I'm using it for here. Um, but uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do is select blur, color, light, and slide. And then we're gonna go down to operator controls and we're gonna select slide and change the slide amount to 35. And then the RGB split to, let's see, let's do, let's do 50. And then we're going to trim that. And then what I like to do is just kind of throw this at the beginning here, we'll duplicate it, throw it again at the end. And it just kind of gives us like a nice little RGB split with some uh, different blur lighting and um, other fast blur effects. All right, so that's pretty much it guys. Um, you can obviously add a little bit more flair to this if you want, you can add some lens flares or you can add some like glass textures on top. You can really go all out with this and, and spice it up as much as you want. Okay, so that's pretty much it guys. Hopefully yours turned out just like mine. If you didn't and you had some issues, drop a comment or a question in the comment section below. The nice thing is now that you guys have completed this, you basically have a template that you can just change the text and kind of throw it in wherever you want and make it fit. If you liked this video and found it helpful, be sure to drop me a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more videos like this, more tutorials like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you get notifications every time I upload or post or say weird stuff on YouTube. I don't, I don't know, man. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I will see you next week. That's right, we're doing weekly uploads. It's so weird because I haven't done this in so long. These lights are really bright. Okay, I'm gonna go, bye.